All right, let's dive in. Today we're talking about a brand new model that's making a pretty bold claim that it can finally solve one of the biggest headaches in AI development. Let's talk about Minimax M2. You know, if you've ever tried to build anything with AI, you face this dilemma. It's the classic trade-off, right? You want power, you want speed, and you want it to be affordable. But for so long, the rule has been you can only pick two. Getting all three? That's felt like a pipe dream. Yeah, it's so common that people in the field actually call it the impossible triangle of AI development. You've seen it, right? You find this incredibly smart model, but it's just so slow, useless for anything real time. Or you find a lightning fast one, but its answers are, let's be honest, kind of dumb. And then there's the one that's both smart and fast, but running it costs an absolute fortune. It's a constant compromise. So in this explainer, we're gonna see how Minimax M2 is trying to break that triangle. We'll look at what's under the hood with its MOE architecture, check out its chops in coding and agent tasks, see how it stacks up against the big players, and finally, talk about why its open source release is such a big deal. Let's get into it. Right, so this has been the core problem for developers forever. You're always forced to make a sacrifice, power, speed, or cost, and that's always put a ceiling on what you can build. But what if that's changing? A new model coming out of the Shanghai-based startup Minimax is claiming it has cracked the code. Meet Minimax M2. It's designed specifically to live in that sweet spot, promising to deliver top-tier power, amazing speed, and seriously disruptive cost efficiency, all at the same time. And here's the magic number, 10 billion. See, the entire model is a beast. It's got 230 billion total parameters. But here's the clever part. For any single task, it only fires up a lean 10 billion of those. That's the secret sauce right there. It's how it manages to be so fast and so cheap without giving up all that raw power. And the team themselves put it perfectly. They call it a compact, fast, and cost-effective MOE model. But the key part is what it's built for, elite performance in coding and agent tick tasks. We're not just talking about a chatbot. This thing is designed for the really heavy lifting, tasks where the AI has to plan, use tools, and actually do things. Okay, so how on earth do they pull this off? How do you get that much power with so much efficiency? Well, the answer isn't just about size, it's about structure. The secret is in its architecture. Let's pop the hood and see what makes this thing tick. It's built using something called a mixture of experts architecture, or MOE for short. Now, the best way to think about this is like having a massive company full of specialists, right? You've got an expert for everything. But when a new project comes in, you don't call the entire company into a meeting. That would be chaos. No, you just call in the handful of experts who are perfect for that specific job. That's what MOE does. It massively cuts down on the work that needs to be done. So here's how it plays out. A prompt comes in, that's your task. A component called the router, which is like the project manager, instantly figures out which experts are needed. It activates just those few subnetworks. They all get to work on their piece of the puzzle at the same time, and then their results are combined to give you the final answer. It's not about being big. It's about being smart with your resources. Okay, so that's the how. We get the architecture, but now for the really fun part. What can this thing actually do? Because all this clever engineering has a very specific goal. The team talks a lot about its overall intelligence and efficiency, which is great. But where they've really doubled down is on two things, advanced coding and serious agent performance. So let's break down what that actually means for anyone writing code. When they say advanced coding, they don't just mean spitting out a quick Python function. No, we are talking about handling the messy reality of a developer's day. M2 is designed to jump across multiple files in a project to get into that critical code, run, fix loop right alongside you. And get this, it can even run tests to make sure its own fixes actually work. And then there's the agent side of things, which is just as cool. Minimax M2 can act like a true assistant. It can plan out complex, multi-step jobs that require juggling different tools. Maybe it needs to use the terminal, then jump over to a browser, then run some code. And maybe most importantly, it's built to handle errors. When something breaks, it doesn't just give up, it tries to recover. So let's bring it all back together. That 10 billion active parameter limit, it's not just a cool number for a spec sheet. What it means in the real world is you get super responsive agent loops, no more waiting around, and way, way better unit economics. It's cheaper to run, plain and simple. All right, so the promises sound great. The tech sounds smart. But you know how it is, claims are one thing, the proof is in the pudding. 
So how does Minimax M2 actually perform when you put it head to head with the giants of the industry? Let's check out the numbers. Okay, take a look at this. What's wild is just how well M2 holds its own everywhere. On SWE Bench, that's a really tough benchmark for real-world software engineering, it pulls a 69.4. That puts it right up there with the big, expensive, closed-source models. And for general agent capabilities, on the Gaia benchmark, it's hitting a super-impressive 75.7. But it's not just about acing specific tests. What about overall intelligence? Well, an independent third party, Artificial Analysis, ran their own tests and gave it a big score, 61%. So what does 61% even mean? Well, to put that into perspective, that score lands Minimax M2 in the global top five for intelligence. It actually comes in ahead of Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro. Let that sink in for a second. For an open source model, that is an absolutely massive deal. But here, this is where we come full circle and see that impossible triangles start to crumble. Let's compare it to something like Anthropic's fantastic Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Minimax M2 delivers this top five in the world performance, but it runs at just 8% of the cost, and it's nearly twice as fast. I mean, come on, that's not just an improvement, that's a genuine game changer. So, let's zoom out. What does all of this mean for the rest of us, for the bigger picture? Because when a model this good, this fast, and this cheap is released into the open, well, it has some pretty huge ripple effects across the entire AI world. First off, by putting the model weights out there for everyone, Minimax is basically pouring gasoline on the fire of community innovation. People can now take this and run with it. It's a direct challenge to the walled gardens, the closed ecosystems that the big tech companies have built. And you know, this also fits into a really interesting trend we're seeing. Chinese AI labs like DeepSeek and Alibaba are really stepping up and leading the way in open source. It's a smart strategy that speeds up progress for everyone and builds influence in a whole new way. And all of this really leads to the most exciting question of all, doesn't it? When you take elite level intelligence and you suddenly slash the cost and crank up the speed, when you remove those old barriers, what happens next? What kinds of new tools, new apps, new businesses suddenly become possible? It really makes you wonder, what are you gonna build with this? Well, the good news is you don't have to just wonder. The power to answer that question is officially in your hands. You can go grab Minimax M2 right now, explore it, build with it, integrate it into your projects. It's already available on all the usual spots, Hugging Face, Alama, and of course, the Minimax Open Platform. Thanks so much for watching.